this is Rachel from 7 and All, and today I am going to be doing a flip through and look inside of Yamitas Level 2. This is the just released in 2023, the second level of the Yamitas Spanish program. I'm also going to try to answer questions as I go through, so it will be a physical look inside the program, but also trying to answer common questions that you might have about the program as I talk through this. One thing to note is that this is not your basic beginner, brand new to Spanish, um, Spanish curriculum. So it is targeted at a rough age level of about first through third grade. And looking at it myself, I definitely would say I wouldn't want to do it with anyone probably younger than first grade for sure, because there's definitely some challenging content in here. So it's not a kindergarten level. It's definitely first and above. Um, but you are going to want to have some basic background in Spanish, some background in Spanish. Your child does not need to be a native speaker. They don't need to be at that level of fluency, but it's really going to help if they have a solid background in Spanish to make the most of this. If you are looking for a beginner Spanish curriculum for your elementary child, feel free to ask me or check out some of my other videos. I have, um, I talk about this quite a bit, but I think this is going to be a great option for those of us who have kids getting to that early elementary level, who have a background in Spanish, but de we definitely need some help with leveling up. And I am not a native Spanish speaker, so it's not so easy for me to use resources that are designed solely for native speakers. But this provides me with enough support that I think it's going to be really, really cool. So let's talk through what all we have here. This is what you get in the physical package. You get an anthology of stories, folk tales. You get some printed early readers that go along with the different themes that you're talking about, or the different themes for each unit of the curriculum. And then you get the course book, which is huge. There is a lot here. So within this curriculum, there are six themed units with 12 lessons per unit. And just as you've come to expect with Yamitas, if you've used other resources from them, all of the instructions to the teacher are completely bilingual. So we have the learning goals in Spanish as well as in English on the other side. Do keep in mind that there is an online element or a digital element to the Yamitas programs as well. So you are going to have audio recordings that you'll be using that you can play from your computer or from your phone. So those are integrated into some of the activities. There are songs, song recordings, as well as recordings that your child will have to listen to and answer questions based on those recordings. There are also um, sometimes videos and there are extra printable flashcards that can be a part of the curriculum as well. So don't ignore the online elements of this course because that's definitely a big part of it and you're going to need those. Um, but the printed out part is also a large part of it. So here you're getting an example of the introduction to the lesson. The first theme is nocturnal animals. We're getting a little song that goes with movements. So this is as gentle as it's going to get in this level. It starts off gentler and it does move up in challenge and what's being expected of the child as you kind of move through the course. So we're introducing specific key vocab that goes with the nocturnal animals theme. We're getting a little bit of phonics spelling practice here, putting in missing syllabus. Then we have copy work that you're working on, a uh, sentence that you're getting to fill out. Here we're identifying whether an animal is diurnal or nocturnal. And then we're learning our goodbye song for the end of each lesson. And that's lesson one. So the lessons are also longer in this level, which I like because I like to have more ideas, more opportunities to practice with words, to keep practicing these Spanish skills because it is the weaker language for our family. So I like the length of the lessons, but also keep in mind, you know, maybe if you don't have that much time on a certain day, you can also divide up lessons and do them over multiple days. I am thinking that we will be starting this when my son is in first grade. I don't want to start it right now. He's in kindergarten. I want to just focus on Spanish phonics for this year. And then I think having that underlying background of 
you know, getting a lot further along with being able to read is going to help us with making the most of this program. So we get little fill in the blanks with anatomy of animals, learning these anatomy words. So I do plan to use this in first grade and the English language arts program I'm planning to use has about 100 lessons and this has about 72 lessons. So theoretically, I could maybe alternate days. We do maybe two Spanish days a week, three English days a week for language arts. And this is, I would say, more heavy on language arts, but it's very multidimensional, very interdisciplinary, that it does include some math. It includes a lot of subject-based learning as well, whatever the topic is. So this is all still in the same unit about nocturnal animals. We get some art studies. Um, here are notes for the teachers because here is where you're starting to get into the lessons based on the anthology. So I'll show you the anthology. And these are very, very short uh, little folk tales. They are not long and overwhelming. So depending on the age of your child, maybe they will be able to read it to themselves in Spanish or maybe you will still be reading this aloud to them. Bright, colorful illustrations. You have a short folktale that you're reading, so then this will be the second one. But you spend four lessons, you read that folktale, you read it again, you read it again, you read it again. So you read it for four lessons consecutively. And in each lesson, you have something that you have to do with that lesson. Maybe you're putting the events of the story in order. Maybe you're doing copy work based on sentences from the story. Maybe you're doing some vocabulary work, filling in blanks answering true or false questions. We might be doing a little bit of grammar work, noticing adjectives here, finding the adjectives that are used to describe things within the story. Again, copy work, or we are, we're, we're supposed to put in a different synonym, el campo y o la pradera, learning about synonyms as well. So that's what I'm saying. I definitely would wait to make sure your child is ready enough to handle ideas like synonyms, adjectives. Um, here we're working on antonyms as well. They're definitely incorporating a lot of the way we play with language, the way that we enrich our language and get beyond just the basics. Um, and there's usually writing activities at the end of the literary section, the, the legend-based section. There's some types of writing activities, and those are gonna be probably your most challenging activities. Then, still within the same unit, we go back kind of on the topic of learning more vocab related to the theme, and we often get into some geography or science-related topic during the last four lessons of the theme. So we're doing a little bit about South America, rainforests, uh, what lives on the forest floor, what lives in the understory, what lives in the canopy layer, right here. So there's a, this, this, you know, this um, nocturnal animals unit can keep you pretty busy. I would say for a good amount of time, uh, you're getting these fact cards about animals and then you're getting to choose which animal you wanna write about um, and make your own fact file here. Based on what you read there, you get to review the clocks that you've been working on the whole time and they're also they give you the phrases for how to say talk about time in Spanish so you're not expected to know that your child's not expected to know those phrases you are fed those phrases um, you're getting to practice with those phrases and that is the first unit of the curriculum right there so along with that you'll also get the two readers early readers so los animales nocturnos aquí and then si yo fuera and you're getting to be if, if you were one of these nocturnal animals very simple short readers but give you extra practice with that vocabulary i'm really excited about using this i think this will be a lot of fun and really enrich our um, spanish curriculum our spanish homeschool routine i do have a link down in the description below and i have a 10 percent off discount code i believe that you can use for your purchase you can get it just digital or you can get the printed version if you want to have something shipped to you like this so yeah this is the next unit is birds there's a whole bunch of different themes in here 
Let's see if I can figure out <laughs> what they are. Maybe this one's Seasons. <laughs> uh, now I was a beta, beta reader for this level as they were creating it. So I, I'm not a fluent Spanish speaker, so I wasn't giving feedback on that, but I was giving feedback on uh, the support given to non-native speakers who are using this, giving feedback on the English instructions and on the activity design to make it practical. You know I'm all about being practical. What's this theme? Okay, Medio Ambiente, uh, the environment. You have a theme. I'm trying to go through too many pages at once. <laughs> Um, but we get all sorts of different themes to explore and I feel like being on the same theme for 12 lessons really, really helps with being, uh, being able to get dive deep into it and really get to know the vocab and explore that theme. We have the human body as a theme. So a lot of science, environment, earth related themes. I'm excited to use this. I hope Yamitas continues to make levels. I'd be really cool to, excited to see what they do next. But I think this really meets a need of getting into more challenging content, content that goes beyond just preschool and kindergarten stuff, but still offering support for those who, for whom Spanish is a second language or they speak it but not <laughs> fluently or their vocabulary might be a little bit more limited. People like me. So I hope that this was helpful for you to see. Definitely check out the link in the description down below to see more and learn more about Yamitas, and I'll be seeing you next time. Bye.